Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Hagerstown. It's great to see all of you. And I'm sure you're looking forward to the chili cook off. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, here we go. Take a look at the person next to you. Say God loves you and I love you too. Now feel the love in the sanctuary. Lift your voice and sing this with me. We come together. We come together. We come together. In the name of love, we come together. We come together. We come together. In the name of love. Now look at the person next to you. Say, I recognize the God in you. I feel the love in the sanctuary. Lift your voice and sing this with me. We come together. We come together. We come together. In the name of love. We come together. We come together. We come together. In the name of love. From every walk of life. Every green and color, and then to reunite. Okay, we're 
work with business is handled. Daily work for today is timeless. I relax and let go, withdrawing my attention from my surroundings. Breathing deeply and rhythmically, my mind relaxes and my heart opens. I enter my sacred inner sanctuary. Here I have no awareness of time. I hear no words. I think no thoughts. I feel no separation. There is only the richness of silence, the awesome presence of infinite love, life, and wisdom. I am one with this presence. The time and attention I devote to my regular practice of meditation builds deep, abiding peace and clarity in my consciousness. In these timeless moments, I discover I have all I need, enough strength, understanding, love, and time to progress along my path and accomplish all that is mine to do. The scripture for today is from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Do you take a moment to read the affirmation for the day on the screen together now, please? In times of moments, in the silence, I discover myself a new Now let that sink into your heart space and think about that what it means to you. <clears throat> and all together one more time. In times of moments, in the silence, I discover myself. Just a, you know, hi, hey, how you doing? 
And again, a gentle reminder, this is not a, an opportunity to share a life story. It's, it's a greeting, my friends. It's a greeting. So let's greet our neighbors. And if you want to greet our friend, Facebook friends, we'll go on up to here. Hello to Facebook friends. Um, hey, Facebook friends, I wanted to greet you. <laughs> Listen, we're so glad that you're here joining us today. We appreciate you, we love you, and thank you for your ongoing support of Unity of Hagerstown. Thank you, Carol. Good to see you, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, because we didn't have all the prayer chaplains here. We still don't, but we have three out of four, so we're going to move forward. And I'm, I'm going to ask our beloved prayer chaplains to come forward and just stand here while I find my glasses. <laughs> basis and they also hold spiritual space during the services here. They, they are also available for one-on-one -on -one prayer support immediately after the service. They go through pretty extensive training in order to do this and it's a, a yearly commitment. So some of these some of these lovely folks had been prayer chaplains before in previous years but they still have to do the training. Okay. Along with these three, Richard Pacheco is a prayer chaplain this, this year as well. <laughs> oh, okay. okay, so we'll move on here. So in the book of Isaiah, the prophet is asked by God, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah responds, Here am I, send me. Today we gather to celebrate and recognize each of you. For you have said, Here am I, send me. Heeding the call to be a prayer chaplain means you were first willing to participate in training. In addition, you committed to a daily spiritual journey based on love, faith, prayer, and gratitude. Demonstrate an active commitment to our ministry and its teachings. Hold a spiritual space of possibilities for others and yourself, knowing and trusting that God is in charge. Prayer, both for yourself and with others. Lovingly listen having and demonstrating a genuine interest in the well-being of the congregants and members of this church and of the other prayer chaplains, and hold all that is shared in strict confidence. In the awareness of the activity of the Holy Spirit, which has led you to this moment of commitment, I invite you to your heart space. And if your heart says yes, I ask that you respond with the words, I am, to the following. Are you willing to accept this commitment and dedication? Aye. Are you willing to remember to open a space for God no matter what? Aye. Are you willing to do your best to stay prayed up? <laughs> Are you willing to support the other members of the prayer chaplain team? Aye. Are you willing to practice self-care? So I'd like to quote Merle Fillmore. She wrote, as you learn to see the fullness of God's light and love and power and substance in others, you will know that you need not pour out your own for them. You will have the knowledge and the light to call their attention to what they have and to prompt them to use it. Dear ones, you have said, yes, I will create a space filled with compassion and love for anyone seeking it. I thank God for each and every one of you, your time, your energy, and your dedication. 
I thank you for the many, many visible and invisible ripples of blessings, which will be the results of your loving service. You are indeed an incredible gift to this ministry. And on behalf of our entire Unity community, thank you, prayer chaplains. And now I'd like to invite the attendees here today in person and online to join me in blessing these prayer chaplains, seeing them full of love and light, knowing they are following their inner guidance. We, together, we bless you. We appreciate you. We behold the light that you are. Thank you, my dears. Yes. We're not going to greet each other again. <laughs> so let's review a bit, shall we? So in the past few weeks, we've been looking at uh, becoming complaint-free, not criticizing, gossiping, or complaining. It's a 21-day challenge based on this book by Will Bowen, and it's uh, so that we might move into a more positive way of communicating and reap the many, many benefits that come from not complaining. There are physical benefits, there are emotional benefits, and there are spiritual benefits as well. We know that, as Bowen says, our words are powerful. And when we change what we say, we begin to change our lives. This challenge also helps us become more mindful of the thoughts that we think the thoughts that we're holding, because the words that we speak are really just expressing the thoughts that we're thinking. They're symbolic of those, those thoughts. It's a spiritual law that the thoughts that we hold, along with the feelings that we're holding, are creating our life's experience. And we can change our thoughts to change our life. And this is so because we are made in the image of God, if you will, as a as spirit. And we are made in the likeness of God, in that we are creative. We are creative spirits. We are creating our life's experience here and now. This very moment, we are doing so. <clears throat> Bowen tells us beliefs define reality, and beliefs can be changed. Perhaps you're wondering, am I ever going to get through 21 days? Yes, you can do this. Beliefs such as that can be changed. Perhaps you're doing okay not stating the, the words out loud, but you begin to pay attention to your thoughts. Am I ever going to be able to change those thoughts? Yes, you can as long as you believe you can. Henry Ford said, and this is not to verbatim, <laughs> whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. You're right. So, we have been given the power of choice to choose not only our words, but our thoughts as well. You know, every once in a while it comes up in conversation with someone who says, I just can't control my thoughts. I just can't do it. Again, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Myrtle Filmer, co-founder of Unity, tells us, this is a long quote. When the thought of limitation or fear or complaining, whatever it is, appears, count it all joy. For these times of deviating from the right or the right-mindedness or uplifting thoughts are the result of the spirit of good doing a much-needed house-cleaning work. Once you become master of yourself, you will not stir up a dust cloud of negativeness which I did not know was a word, yeah. <laughs> when you discover some hidden corner in your mind that needs to be free. We gently sweep it away. It's not by force of will. It's just like, oh, I don't think that thought is serving me. I'm going to choose this thought instead. Charles Fillmore, the other co-founder of Unity and Myrtle's husband, said concerning training our thoughts, that some drivers let their cars run away, but the law always holds them responsible for damage done. And they find it cheaper in the end to pay more attention to their driving. Okay, it's the same with our thoughts. Our thoughts are creating our life experience. It may behoove us to pay more attention to what we are thinking. Our thinking nature is always busy. We've got a little, maybe a couple little hamster wheels going on, right? It's always active, sometimes impulsive, not always wise. It needs training. Our thinking nature is really the gatekeeper for ideas. 
Becoming more mindful of the complaints that we speak helps us become more mindful of the thoughts that we think. And that is the starting point of change. If we truly want a life of harmony, of peace, of prosperity, we need to think thoughts of harmony, peace, and prosperity. You know, often we are reactive. In today's society, there's a lot of reaction going on. I think you would agree with me there. But experiences do not cause our thoughts. Someone, something may happen in the external world, and you have the opportunity to become upset, but you don't have to be upset. You can choose differently. The, the incident is outside of yourself, but what happens in your mind is determined by your attitudes, your beliefs, and also, my friends, habit. It is determined by habit, our habitual thought patterns. So your thoughts are your reactions to the incident if you are reacting. The incident does not make the thought. Eric Butterworth tells us, Eric Butterworth was a unity minister, uh, a wonderful unity minister, and he said that no one makes you upset. You are upset because you are upsettable. Oh. It's, I mean, it's so true, right? Yeah, so we react to the level of our consciousness at the time. But the good news is, we all have this higher consciousness within us. We have a Christ consciousness, the Buddha nature, whatever you want to call it, our higher self, our true self within us, that knows only love, that doesn't recognize separation. We have the power to control the thoughts running around in our head to pivot from those that are not serving us to something that does serve our good, our greater good. So instead of asking why is the world falling apart in this way or that way, it doesn't matter which way, ask why am I allowing an outside circumstance to determine how I will react? We are susceptible to media, right? Pushing our buttons. And we have become a reactive society. We are susceptible to social media as well. So the first step in is to really become aware of the thoughts that we're thinking. That's what this challenge helps us do. It helps us become aware of those thoughts. So, and then to become less reactive, the second step is to know no matter what is going on in the world, not, no matter what is going on in your family, or no matter what is going on in your neighborhood, you have a choice. You don't have to be angry or fearful or complaining or gossiping or criticizing. You can choose to think positively. You can choose to think lovingly, compassionately. It may not be easy to change the way you think, but our brains, as we said last week, are plastic. They can change no matter how deep that root is of negative. Uh, thought patterns. We are the master of our mind. We may not have thought of that before. Maybe we thought we were at the whim of the thoughts that come in. It takes commitment to change, though, because we may have been thinking the other way for so long. You know, it takes commitment. And we can pivot, we can learn to pivot from did life deny to life affirming thoughts? And we can understand, and we can understand it, and the understanding helps us to know that we are not separate from divine mind. We have a consciousness within divine mind. Divine mind has a consciousness within us. The intelligence in back of all thought is the intelligence that runs the universe. And we direct this intelligence with our consciousness. We can permit the creativity of the universe into twisted, bitter thoughts and create a twisted, bitter life experience, or we can choose differently. There's only one basic intelligence, and it creates as we think and feel and energetically vibrate, because the universe speaks the language of energy. We are energetic beings. So whatever vibration you're holding that's what we're sending out, no matter what our words say, really. So I heard a story, no, I read a story recently, and I wanted to fact check it, 
And I did, and it was true. <laughs> so I'm gonna share it with you. Although this version, I think, may have been, maybe is a little flowery, and that's okay. <laughs> it still has a great message. Tess was a precocious eight-year-old girl when she heard her mother and father talking about her little brother, Andrew. All she knew was that he was very sick and they were completely out of money. They were moving to a smaller place because they didn't have the money to afford a larger one and the doctor appointments. Only a very costly surgery could save Andrew and it was looking like they didn't have enough money for that and no one would loan them the money. She heard her father say to her mother in desperation, only a miracle can save him now. Tess went to her bedroom and pulled out her big bag and, and poured all the change out onto the floor and counted it and then counted it again and counted it one more time because she wanted to be perfect in the amount that she had. She, no, no room here for mistakes. She placed all the coins back into her big bag, closed it up, and she went out the back door without anyone knowing to the drugstore a block away. She waited patiently for the pharmacist to give her some attention, but he was busy at this moment talking to another man. So she kind of <clears throat> cleared her throat, trying to get his attention. No good. He didn't look up. Finally, she took a penny out of the piggy bank and started banging the counter with it, and that did it. He looked over and he says, I'm talking to my brother from Chicago. What do you want? Can you give me a minute? And she goes, well, I want to talk to you about my brother. He's really, really sick, and I want to buy a miracle. I beg your pardon, said the pharmacist. His name is Andrew, and he has something bad growing inside his head. And my daddy says that a miracle can save him now. So how much does a miracle cost? We don't sell miracles here, little girl. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Listen, I've got some money put, put, put by for it. And if it's not enough, I can get the rest, I promise. Well, the pharmacist brother who was standing there came over to her and said, what kind of miracle does your brother need? I don't know. All I know is that he's really sick and mommy says he needs an operation and daddy can't pay for it. So I wanna use my money. How much do you have? Asked the man. I have $1.11. $1.11? Well, what a coincidence, the man said. That's, that's the exact price of a miracle. He took her money in one hand and asked her to lead her home to, so he could meet her parents and her little brother. Let's see if I have the kind of miracle you need, he said. This man was Dr. Carlton Armstrong, a neurosurgeon, who did the operation for free on Andrew, who came home shortly after, was doing well, and the Tessa's mother and father were talking once more, grateful for the chain of events that led to this. The surgery, her mom whispered, was a real miracle. I wonder how much it would have cost. Tess overheard them, and she knew exactly how much it cost. It was one dollar and 11 cents, and the faith of a child. Tess had the faith and vision to see her brother getting the operation he needed. Faith is the ability to see beyond the external to the presence of God. God is present everywhere. Spirit, divine love, whatever you want to call it, that presence is there everywhere and within ourselves as well. If we're struggling with changing a habit, whether it's stopping to complain or another habit, we can take time and envision ourselves no longer doing that, no longer complaining, seeing affirming words coming out of our mouths. We can take time to see that in our mind's eye. Something inside of you wants to push past the limiting beliefs that have held you down and lift you into higher expression. You have this urge, which is probably why you took up the challenge to begin with. You can trust in this vision. It's telling you of the person you were meant to be, not in entirety, but the next step for you. 
David at Bowen Ritz tells us, your vision is your personal insight into your own unique higher possibilities. Your vision is not your only possibility or your last and final potential. You have potential far beyond your present vision. As a spiritual being having a human experience, you are infinite in your ability to expand and grow. So how do you see yourselves, my friend? As someone who can't stop complaining? Or who can't change? We can have faith knowing that we have that power of God within us to accomplish what we see ourselves doing. We can see ourselves and, and hope for each other as well. We can see ourselves having a, a peaceful, harmonious, prosperous, compassionate life. And we, as I said, holding the faith in that picture for each other. And as we do so, our thoughts begin to shift to make it manifest in our lives. Some of us may be like the woman who wished to test the idea of moving mountains with the, with the grain of a, with the faith of the size of a grain of mustard seed. So she spent the entire night praying and cultivating her faith. The next morning she looked out the window and the mountain was still there. It hadn't moved. And she goes, well, the mountain's still there, just as I expected. So what are we expecting? What are we expecting of ourselves here? The thoughts we are holding, again, are creating our life's experience. We get to choose. We get to choose those thoughts. We get to choose our life's experience. And our faith in what we choose makes it so. So we can know that we are full of love and wisdom and faith. I invite you to affirm with me together. I stand fast in faith. I am courageous and strong and free from fear. So we're going to move into a time of meditation. I invite you to adjust your position as necessary to get comfy. This is going to be about a 10 minute meditation. It's going to be guided to begin with, then followed by a period of silence. So I invite you to close your eyes. Start noticing your breath. Letting go of any tension in the body. Just allowing a softness to come, the muscles to relax. And as we relax our body, our thoughts calm down. And releasing any fears or any concerns that may be weighing heavy on the heart today. I stand fast in faith. I'm courageous and strong and free from fear. Let's not let small doubts or fears unravel us today. Let's hold on to this steady, secure faith that is ours. Releasing any fear, any limitation, any thought that keeps us playing small. Affirming our faith in spirit within for the strength and the courage that we need to change. I stand fast in faith. And as we stand fast in faith, a feeling of strength quietly takes hold, and we are assured of the power of love within. We have the faith to know that all is well. All is well. And as we move into a period of silence, I invite you to focus on your heart space. And 
use as an anchor and a vehicle to deepen the meditation. This affirmation, I'm courageous and strong and free from fear. I'm courageous and strong and free from fear. And allow that spirit of love to enfold you throughout this time in the silence. As we continue to sit restfully, I invite you to allow this next song just to ease you into greater peace. I will surrender to my greatest I will release any fears that block my way. For every step I take is taken in your faith. And I am stronger every moment, every day. My mind is willing and my heart is open wide. I trust my instincts and let spirit be my guide. I vow to live a life that's real and pure and free. As I continue walking in this mystery, I will surrender to my greatest, highest good. I will release any fear 
tears that block my way. For every step I take is taken in pure faith. And I am grateful every moment, every day. There may be walls, there may be roadblocks in my way. So I can choose to take a higher path each day. And now I know that what I thought was safe and sound was only habit and regret that held me down. I will surrender to my greatest, highest good. I will release any fears that block my way. For every step I take is taken in pure faith. And I am kinder at every moment, every day. And I'm more loving at every moment every day I will surrender every moment every day Amen <clears throat> So I invite you as we come back to this room to join me in our offertory affirmation <coughs> together God has lavished unfailing abundance the rich, omnipresent substance of the universe, this all-providing source of infinite prosperity, is individualized as me, the reality of me. Um, yes, we'll have another song during our offering.
the next two Wednesdays, we have our Complaint Free World book discussion. That includes dinner as well for $10. And then the Men of Unity are meeting on the 14th. Is that, do I have the date right? The yeah, it usually is the third Thursday. Okay, they're meeting on the 21st. Okay, that's my bad. I'm good with that. I can admit to that. The 22nd is our dinner and games night. There is a, a sign up sheet going around for that. It's a wonderful time. We had so much fun last time. It was just a hoot. <laughs> a homemade vegetarian meal and any games that you want to play, board games or card games. Um, and it was just a lot of a great way to get to know the community a little bit more. And then we have a special Good Service Friday that Reverend Richard Pacheco will be doing via Zoom. And uh, Stations of the Cross, Cosmic Cross, based on Matthew Fox's book by the same name, held at Ann Baker's beautiful farm. This is a self-guided uh, tour that you go from station to station outside. It's about a mile long. Um, hike next to the stream, and you can go half a mile. Half a mile. Oh, my. for some reason I thought it was longer. <laughs> oh, well, a half a mile, half a mile long, unless you double back, okay? <laughs> and then also, um, uh, we have a couple of special services coming up with, with the choir providing special music, Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday both, and then choir practice for those special services are going to be Sundays at 10 10. Okay, and up for anybody who's interested in the stations of the Cosmic Cross Meditative Walk, it'll be set up as of 10 in the morning and you can come anytime you'd like and just follow the signs. It really is a beautiful thing. I mean, with the spring springing all around you, it's just a great little walk and a half mile walk and, <laughs> and stopping to read the, uh, the station words. So. Okay, I think we have another song going on. Should we stand for this? Absolutely. If you like. If you like, and if you're able. I've got no, no place whatsoever. I've got no. Through the twist and the turn, 